Everyone loves fast websites, but do you know how websites powered by frameworks like Next.js actually make it fast? Well, there's a neat and dirty trick known as prefetching, which actually fetches content before you even need it. So I'm showing you an example of a website which is powered by Next.js. It's hosted on Cloudflare, but let's just take a look at it. If I'm inside the inspector tab, if I refresh this and if I Take a look, you can see that there is a pricing call over here, which has already happened, right? Now, if I go ahead and hover over this button, obviously nothing happened because we have already prefetched this ahead of time. So one of the things is that you just prefetch everything ahead of time. So the moment I click on this, you can see that the page instantly loads because we don't have to prefetch this file, this component file, which is required for rendering the page. The other way of doing this is, let's say if I visit a website, which is powered by Fermion that implements pre fetching on hover, right? So what that means is let's say you are on a page like this. Now watch what happens when I hover my cursor over this test course one, you see that the moment I hover over this, I get an API call, which automatically fetches this. And then the moment I click on this, you can see that the page instantly loads. Now this call itself is what should have been happening when I click on the thing, right? But by prefetching it, like by actually making that call ahead of time, what we can do is skip the spinner, which would require a person to wait. Now, the problem is, first of all, is that although this call is also quite fast, it just takes 65 milliseconds on our edge network, but still this is wasted bandwidth if you don't open this, right? Because if your intent is not to open this, you are wasting it, but that's more or less for the most part of okay trade-off for speed and performance. Now, these are the only two strategies which I personally know, but there's a third strategy, which this library, which I found out introduces called Foresight.js. It's an open source project. It's a nice project. I really like the concept. Maybe check it out on GitHub, give it a star. But what this does is that it tries to predict your user's next move. And you can see that the website's homepage itself is very, very understandable. It's like a good demo, I would say, because as I'm moving my cursor, if I move my cursor fast, the arrow grows. And if I move it slowly, the arrow stays small, right? So you can sort of like see like you're able to create an intent based on where the user wants to go with this arrow, right? So what they're saying is that, hey, we will pre fetch smarter instead of like using just prefetching all the links on a single page like we were doing on our home page or inside a school when you hover over something and then it prefetches instead of doing that just do a mouse based trajectory prediction it can also support keyboard navigation or scroll based prediction so it has like a bunch of optimizations built in right so the fastest way to understand this is to try out this prefetching thing so now if i reset these cards you can see like this is what happens in the second version which i showed you click to prefetch is obviously like something if you have already clicked you might as well you know just you're fully sure that the user wants to go there so this is the slowest but the safest in terms of bandwidth this is I mean, not so safe in terms of bandwidth because you're spending more data, but this is still an okay trade-off, right? What they are trying to do over here, see if I take my cursor very fast over here, but I did not enter it yet, but it's still just prefetched it, right? Because based on my speed of action, it was able to predict that I'm going to click it anyway. So even before I hover it, sort of think of it in a way like my cursor becomes a very large thing. And the faster I'm moving, the larger my cursor becomes. That means the larger my intent becomes of clicking that. So similarly, we can do this thing over here also. So you can see, it also works on the, you know, on the scroll effect. So you can see this green bar when I'm trying to scroll up and down. So this is what I think the third point is. It's a scroll based prediction. So if I go ahead and scroll down, you can see I already got all these three links prefetched, but not anything else, right? So it's not a brute force attempt of prefetching everything, which is what the first variant, which I showed you on Fermion.app was, but it, this is still decent, right? Because you're still getting sort of like a brute force level performance, but without actually fetching everything. This actually makes sense, especially if your edge network or your edge server is slow, right? I mean, in case of 65 milliseconds, which is our case, it might not make a lot of sense to do something like this. But if you're rendering probably is taking north of 700, 800 milliseconds, because it has to go to some remote server, do all the rendering and get back, then this would be actually very helpful, right? Assuming that your server can handle the load, additional load that comes with this prefetching. Let's try to trigger this, the corner tag, right? This, this one, let's try to 
play around with this. So I'm going to come with full speed and you can see that even if my cursor was outside, it was not fully hovering, it still made this element ready, right? So the same thing can happen. And obviously in case of scrolling as well. So in case of scrolling, we can just directly get the thing going on. The decent thing is that if you check out their documentation, they also have pre-made framework integrations, which is very neat, right? If you want to add it to Next.js, for example, you just have to override the link component and you just have to use the foresight link. I think that's all it takes. So you might as well just override link component at all and just, you know, change your import from next slash link to this component and, you know, call it a day. I don't know how stable it is. I have just came across this, so I don't really know about how many bugs or how many things there are going on over here. It's a relatively new thing. It's a new repository over here. The author is still active, I hope. It's like maybe like a couple of months old, but the source code has been added, I think, two days ago. I don't know. There are no issues. That could be a good thing and a bad thing both. In this case, it seems like it's relatively early as a project, but I find the idea actually neat because this is something which is required. Even I needed it a couple of times here and there when I thought like, you know, the edge server's performance is not good enough. Maybe there's a faster way than hovering over links all the time. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I will not go into how is it doing it exactly because it's basically simple JavaScript and mouse movements and Delta. So when you move, for example, the basic idea I can give you how this can be implemented is when you move your cursor, there are certain events that are emitted, right? By a JavaScript and you can use those events to calculate the delta also the time like how fast your mouse is moving so javascript i think in the event itself also gives you the delta but even if it does not you can still maintain that delta by yourself right and based on the distance that the mouse has moved the x and the y coordinate it's maths basically you can calculate the speed the direction like how the mouse is moving and based on that you can create sort of like a vector in that direction and within that vector you can figure out how many links are there right? So again, a lot of maths is going on here. It's not something which is, you know, anything which is a lot of voodoo magic or anything. I actually think that this would also be very performant because there are ways in JavaScript to mark this event as passive. So you don't ever want to like stop the scroll or stop anything. So you can mark the event as passive. That means JavaScript will fire it, but it will fire it without blocking the main thread, right? Or without, it knows that you would not block the event. So it will not affect the performance at any point. But yeah, this is actually neat. This is a good library. I think I might try it out in a couple of side projects that I do, but do try it out. It's a good project. I I liked the idea overall and hopefully the code is stable as well. That's all for this one. If you liked it, do let me know in the comments. I will see you in the next video very soon.